What is going on, guys? Johnny on the track, back with another video. Um, yes, I'm in this freaking dress shirt. Um, I just got home for work from work, um, but I wanted to get this video recorded before I kind of settle in. Um, so I'm excited. It is finally that week. NASCAR is back with the Bush Light Clash at the Coliseum Sunday night, eight o'clock Eastern time. We've got last chance qualifiers, I believe, at five. Eastern. Um, and then the heat races will take place on Saturday night. Um, so action packed weekend full of NASCAR. That means we're back. The bets are back. What we do is back. I am so excited. I, I just cannot wait for this weekend. I like the Bush Clash. I think it's a good event. Um, I think it's been good at the Coliseum. They've got a machine gun Kelly um halftime performance. So that'll be pretty interesting. I I'm uh I'm Eager to see how that all pans out. Uh, Machine Gun Kelly at a NASCAR race. We'll, we'll see there. Um, but yeah, so we got action on Saturday night. We've got action on Sunday, uh, you know, afternoon into night as well. Um, so with that, we've got to get betting. Uh, we got to get the bets out. So um, let's do it. One more thing real quick um, with this show being back and, um, you know, us Doing our bets, um, the partnership with the NASCAR betting preview show, you see the logo up top on the screen there. That partnership is back. Um, so if you uh, happen to be watching this on YouTube, that's great. I appreciate it. Um, but you can also listen to the podcast um, on the NASCAR betting preview show podcast feed available on all streaming podcast platforms. Um, that's me. That's a bunch of other content creators that talk NASCAR betting trucks, Xfinity series, cup series. Uh, we talk it all. Uh, so definitely um, subscribe to the podcast feed for the NASCAR betting preview show. And then Wednesday nights, um, I believe that's uh, still the time Wednesday uh, nights, on X, on Twitter, the NASCAR betting preview show, uh, show does a spaces show um, that gives you an extra um, leg up on uh, on the race and and um, what a lot of betters in the industry, NASCAR betters in the industry will be betting that, uh, that week. So um, great to have that partnership back. Appreciate them putting this content on their platform um, for more people to listen to as a podcast as well as the YouTube channel. However you're listening, watching, whatever, I appreciate it. Um, they appreciate it. So um, yeah, uh, just just want to say thanks and um, excited uh, to keep that partnership going for 2024. So with that, let's get into the bets for the Bushlight Clash at the Coliseum. Okay, um, so I'm going to start by saying something that I do not say often. Um, and it's funny cause I literally put out a video, um, last night about, uh, kind of for those who might be new to NASCAR betting, the industry, the realm, the bets you can place and all that stuff. Um, and I did say, you know, usually we have a leg up because I, my show goes out on Tuesday. We play some early bets. Not all our bets are placed early, but to get good value, we place our bets Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, early week. Um, to get good odds, right? That favor the better. Um, I'm veering away from that for the Bush Light Clash, and I'll tell you why. Uh, qualifying la um, races, the what are they called? The heat races, they call them. Um, 25 lap heat races, as I mentioned, Saturday night. So um, this is an event that not everybody can qualify for, um, and in that case, I. I don't want to bet Joey Logano, even though I really like Joey Logano, because what if he has an engine fail failure or gets in an accident on one of the Saturday heat races? Um, that bet, I I mean, maybe they would waive it. I don't think they would, to be honest with you, because, um, I mean, part of this is to qualify into the event. Um, so I would say wait. I would say wait until Sunday, either 
post the last uh, chance qualifying, which I want to get the exact. So last chance qualifier is at 640 Eastern time, 340 Pacific time. So either place your bet after that um, concludes. So then you have the field or um, if a guy uh, does end up qualifying into the event uh, from the heat races on Saturday and you like said driver, uh, bet Saturday, bet Saturday night or Sunday morning. Now that you know that driver is locked into the main show. Um, so that is my advice. Again, I don't say that often. Usually I like um, drivers early in the week. I give them out. You place them, you get the best value, um, the best bang for, for your bet, if you will. Um, but we're going to veer away from that. Now, even though I'm saying we're going to wait, um, I still am going to tell you who I think is going to be fast and who I like this weekend. Um, I mentioned the name Joey Logano. I'm going to start with the name Joey Logano. Um, he's won this clash event before. I think this style of track, this style of racing, this is the smallest track they race on in this series. I know it's not a points event, but it's still an event that crowns a winner with a trophy, and it feels good to win this event. Joey Logano has won here before. He was pretty good on short tracks um, last season. One thing to note, um, this package, although they're changing the short track package for this season, they are not changing it for the Clash. So the numbers we're going to be looking at, we're going to be looking at track history here at the Clash at the Coliseum, and then last year's short, flat track ranking. Joey Logano fourth fastest at New Hampshire, third fastest at uh, Martinsville, seventh fastest at the second Richmond race, had a good first Richmond race. So Joey Logano had a good short track package throughout the season last year, and his style fits this racing and this track brilliantly. I like Joey Logano. I think he's going to have a good race. He always tends to be in this thing at the end. Um, it's just, you know, one of those things where Joey Logano on a short track he might have a terrible race throughout most of the duration of the race. And then sure enough, at the end, you see Joey Logano up front. Um, so I like Logano here in this spot. Another guy that I really like, um, and this is just strictly, um, I guess, by the numbers, um, but more or less, I guess, um, I don't know, just by the the way this driver has shown um, consistency at short tracks over his career, that is Christopher Bell. Um, there were three short flat tracks last year that Christopher Bell ranked in the top five in overall speed last year. Uh, that would be Phoenix, that would be Richmond, and that would be the second Martinsville race. You tack on the second uh, Phoenix race, as well as the New Hampshire race, Christopher Bell was top 10 in overall speed um, in all of those races, short, flat tracks. Christopher Bell has proven to be very good at short, flat tracks. He's got, he's got a New Hampshire win in his career. He's got a Martinsville win in his career. I like Bell in this spot. Um, I think Joe Gibbs is going to be fast. They, as a team, had really good short track packages last year. Overall, if we look at short, flat track, overall speed, the fastest driver um, was Denny Hamlin, a Joe Gibbs racing driver. Christopher Bell was um, fifth in this category, but I like Bell here in this spot. Um, I think Bell is going to have a really, really good year. Uh, and I think if they bring one of those cars they brought to a lot of the short tracks last year, Bell is, is going to look uh, look pretty good. That's going to be a hot rod. Um, another guy that I am targeting um, that I assume – will um even after the heat races and the last chance qualifier i think this driver is going to lock himself in in those early uh heat races and i still think you're going to be able to get good value on this driver even though i assume we're going to see this guy fast in his qualifying heat races uh, and that is ryan priest ryan priest interestingly enough was actually the driver that led the most laps last year at um at the bush clash and if not for, he had like an electrical failure. Um, he had an electrical failure that kind of cost him this, this race. But I think if he didn't have that electrical failure and this thing finished like green and, and he was able to run, um, just run those laps, the the pace that he was running them, I think Ryan Priest could have won this thing. Uh, his, um, his teammate, Eric Almarola, 
um, who was also very fast at the short flat tracks last season, eighth overall in speed. Um, he, he was on the pole. So Stuart Haas racing, they were not good at uh, a lot of different tracks last year, but short flat tracks, they were actually pretty darn good. Um, you take a closer look at Ryan Priest and the numbers 10th fastest overall at Martinsville, that first Martinsville race where he won the pole. He led the most laps in that race. Um, second Richmond race. He was super fast, fourth fastest car in that finished, I believe fifth. Um, so Ryan Priest, he built his career on short tracks, racing modifieds. He looked stout at this track. He had a great car last year. Um, and by the numbers should be a, a, a top 10 to top five car, um, going into this race. So Christopher Bell, I like Joey Logano. I like Ryan Priest. I like, I think th those are three names, um, that we can look at. And then the one other guy that I'm going to throw out there, um, and the numbers don't say it, to be honest with you, uh, this guy wasn't really that good at short flat tracks last year. Um, but I think he's going to come back with a vengeance, a vengeance this year. And that is Chase Elliott. Um, I think Chase Elliott is for all that happened last year with the broken leg to the suspension, to the not winning a race, um, to obviously not being in the playoffs. I think all this has kind of led to what's going to be a resurgence year for Chase Elliott. Um, I expect him to have a huge year and I think it's going to start from day one. Um, and I know they're bringing a previous, uh, package, but you know, his teammates, Larson and Byron, um, were some of the fastest guys on these style tracks last year. And Hendrick motor sports is always, always good. Um, pretty much everywhere they go. So chase Elliott, I would watch for, I think, like I said, I think he's going to come out of the gate hot. I think that team's going to come out of the gate hot. And I think Chase Elliott is going to be a guy that you're going to look at for the clash. You probably want to look at him for the Daytona 500. Um, and I think he starts out hot and, and wins a couple races early, quite frankly. So those are kind of the guys that I expect to be good. Um, if you do want to place a bet on a guy like a Joey Logano early, look, I don't, I feel pretty confident that a guy like Joey Logano is going to qualify into this thing uh, or race his way, I should say into this thing, but you never know. Um, so I'm advising waiting until Sunday afternoon after that last chance qualifier, or if your driver qualifies in um, Saturday night, you feel comfortable, make that bet, do it. Um, but you know, if, if you feel confident, like, Hey, I, I'm feeling Ryan priest. I like the value I can get early on a guy like Ryan priest, um, lock that in. I, I'm not going to tell you not to, I'm just going to tell you, um, be careful because that bet could be wasted because your driver isn't even in the main show. Um, so those are the guys that I'm targeting or, or at least looking at and expecting to be fast, uh, this weekend. I'm excited. Um, I think this is going to be a great event. Want to know what you guys think? Put uh, your drivers of, of who you expect to be fast in the comments section below. Where to find my final bets? Where are those going to be? At J-O-T-T underscore podcast on Twitter or X. Um, Johnny on the track on Action Network. That's a betting kind of uh, social media app. You can give me a follow on that. All my bets are placed there. Um, that's where I'm going to place the, the final bets I'm, I'm rolling with um, on uh, Sunday. And... Um, yeah, like this video it goes a long way for the for the uh, channel. Subscribe if you're a first time viewer, first time watcher, first time listener, and you're interested in betting with us throughout the season. Uh, I'm excited for really everything, uh, you know, all, all, all the races that we're going to be betting on and winning this year. So appreciate you guys listening and uh, we'll see you next time.